So I did a little Googling earlier because I wanted to know the origin of the term a fool and his money are soon parted because that definitely applies to me or any Maserati owner. And it turns out it has nothing to do with Maserati owners because a guy named John Tesser, something like that, came up with it in 15 73 but still it applies to me and this maserati more than pretty much any other car because i've owned it continuously for five months it's been continuously broken and i've spent thousands of dollars but now that it's finally sorted and fixed for the moment i'm just outside of the place that fixed it so i haven't even driven it 100 yards yet I, i'm i'm starting to see the appeal of maserati ownership it's it's real pretty. So to recap, for those of you that haven't been following, I bought the cheapest Maserati Quattro Porte for only $8,800. That is the cheapest one with the good ZF gearbox. I bought it assuming the transmission would be fine because it doesn't have the original transmission that came in the Quattro Porte, the F1 automated manual single clutch thing that breaks every 10,000 miles and costs thousands and thousands of dollars to fix and assumed it was going to be the engine problem where it has an issue with the cam variators that costs thousands and thousands to fix, but it was the opposite. The engine perfectly fine at 88,000 miles and it was the transmission, the good German transmission that was throwing the error codes. I actually really lucked out because I bought this thing sight unseen in Florida. I had no idea what kind of condition it was in mechanically and that's just incredibly stupid. Never ever buy a car cross country sight unseen, especially a Maserati. That's as dumb as asking Doug DeMuro for fashion advice. It's just, it's just really, really stupid. Don't ever do it, but I did it and it showed up actually running and driving, which was a big surprise, but it did have numerous electrical issues and warning lights. I got it to the car wizard and he fixed a lot of things. The clunk in the suspension, a few warning lights for like the parking brake and some other weird things. The doors, they're electronic, they wouldn't pop. Uh, he fixed all of that, but he could not solve the warning light for the transmission. The wizard was sadly defeated by the warning message for the transmission. He tried fixing some wires. When that didn't work, he replaced the mechatronics, the electronic computer that controls the transmission, and the message still wouldn't die. And since he doesn't have a specialized Maserati scan tool, he couldn't really dig into it to see why. He could see the error, but he couldn't see why there was still an error. So I had no choice but to take it up to Kansas City, about 200 miles away, to the Maserati dealer. And when I took it up here, I assumed they were going to tell me, transmission error, it needs a new transmission, please give me $3 million. But actually, they didn't. The fix was less than $200. Yes, less than $200. All they needed to do was go in and program this Maserati to think that it doesn't have a paddle shift transmission. It got confused because 2007 is a weird year where part of the cars were those single clutch horrible paddle shift transmissions and then half were these automatic transmissions and apparently this car was confused and thought it was the older version and that needed to be programmed away. With the Maserati scan tool just a couple of clicks, boom, gone. I was totally free of warning lights except for the one that popped up as I was driving it up here for a headlamp leveling warning. That one cost $400 to fix because it needed a new leveling motor. Apparently that split in two. But I feel like getting out of a Maserati dealer with an old Quattro Porte that you buy for $8,000 for less than a grand to have it completely sorted is a miracle. Like it needs to go back to Italy in the Vatican so the Pope can celebrate this miracle. But even though it's now totally sorted, the car is still terrible. It's awful, but it left the factory new that way. And to tell you why this car is still terrible, I'll show you as we hit the road back to Kansas. Now, when I say sorted, I'm kind of stretching the truth a little bit because there are some things that still don't work. The interior door handle on the passenger door uh, doesn't work. You have to be a gentleman in this car and always open the door for your passenger. The instrument cluster has a few dead circle spots right here, which you'll see when I start it up. And there's a lot of wear and tear in this thing. Yes. And I just noticed when I adjust my lumbar, it makes a really strange noise and shakes the entire seat like it's massaging it, like it's a massage button, but it's just the lumbar motor going out and, and making a lot of racket and vibrating in the seat. Italian seat massager, but now let's start it up. And every time you start up a Maserati Quattroporte, the check engine light comes on and it checks the system every single time. So we wait and we wait and we wait and you have all this anxiety until the check engine light eventually goes off. Or it's supposed to. There. It's like 30 seconds of, will it go off? 
Will it go off? Check, okay, check, okay. So that beeps at you six times every time you start up the car to make sure that you know that the car is okay. Because that's such a surprising thing on a Maserati that there's nothing wrong, it has no warning lights, that it needs to alert you to the fact that it doesn't have any warning lights. All right, let's merge here. Oh yeah. So this Maserati does have some quirks and, and errors, but it does run and drive fine. But by no means does this feel like a $100,000 plus car, which is what it cost brand new. The interior, quality wise, fit and finish wise, it's terrible. The gaps, the quality of the material they used, it's just awful when you compare it to say a Mercedes S-Class or a BMW 7 Series, which cost the same as this car. For less money than this, you could have bought a 2007 Mercedes E63 AMG, which is what I have, or my old 2007 BMW M5. Now you would have had similar terrible reliability with those two cars, but you would have had a way nicer interior with nicer technology that, that makes sense. This interior, it's like it was designed by a blind person. The German cars of this era were so much better even BMW with their iDrive, but also the performance. An M5, an E63, they were at 500 horsepower by this time, over a second quicker to 60 than this Maserati Quattroporte, and they handled a lot better than this. Now, the Maserati does feel pretty light as far as the handling goes. It feels like a much smaller car. Just It just feels lighter, but I imagine if you take this thing around a track, it would just get embarrassed. If any of those cars, now that they're 12 years old, could even do a lap nowadays without braking, I don't, I don't think any of them could make it. So I'll admit, this Maserati is awful. I paid $8,800 for it, $1,000 to ship it to Kansas, and then another $3,000 to sort it out, which puts me around $13,000 into this thing. Not bad considering it cost $100,000 new, but when you look at it in every single quantifiable way, you would be way better off buying a German equivalent that has depreciated just as much. That is, if you're a thinking man, which if you're a thinking man, you wouldn't buy any of those three cars in the first place. You'd buy a Honda Accord or Toyota Camry. So if you're not a smart man like me and are attracted to shiny old European things, this Maserati has that Italian it factor that you just can't ignore and honestly it's starting to grow on me. This Maserati made the 200 mile trip back to Wichita without a single problem, except when I turn the headlights, the license plate bulb, I guess one of them's out, is giving me a warning light in the dash, but that's no big deal. This thing drives just like it's supposed to be, and I'm less than $13,000 into it. People don't buy Italian cars to be the fastest or the smartest purchases ever. They buy them because they are beautiful. They sound amazing and you are definitely the coolest looking person getting their last, if, if at all, if it breaks. Which is the way it's supposed to be for Italian cars. I think the symbol for Maserati is just perfect. I don't think of it as a trident, something that Aquaman would use. I think of it as a spork. Just like how a spork doesn't do a very good job of being a fork or a spoon, this Maserati doesn't do a very good job of being a sports saloon or a luxury car. It's just, a Maserati Quattroporte. We'll see if I continue to be charmed by this beautiful Pininfarina body and this intoxicating engine and exhaust note, and I want to continue keeping this car. I really have no idea if it's good or not, even though I've owned it for five months, because it's never been fixed. And now that it's here, I've since bought a Lamborghini Gallardo, which definitely more than scratches the Italian itch that wasn't scratched before buying this thing, well, since my Ferrari burned to the ground, so... Really, I don't know. If somebody offered me $10,000 for this thing, 
I'd probably be really tempted. But then again, what could I find for $10,000 that would come even close to matching this incredible car? I really can't think of anything. I mean, right now I'm happier than a fat American that just got a $100 gift card to the Olive Garden. That's what this thing is, just a bottomless basket of Olive Garden breadsticks. Faux show. Thank you for watching.